Well, quite simply, as a parent myself and as a rock fan, I know that when I see an album cover with a severed goat's head in the middle of a pentagram between a woman's legs, that it's not the kind of album I want my son to be listening to. Right. Uh, if I read a title on the back of, say, somebody said, Ice Cream Castle, uh, a title called uh, If the Kid Can't Make You Come, whatever it is, I realize that's a sexually explicit song. By just looking at the cover, looking at the lyrics, looking at the, I should say, the uh, titles, that should cover just about all bases. The few albums that do not express their intentions on the cover or in the song titles, I think a parent could list, take it home, listen to it, and I don't think there's too many retail stores that would deny them the ability to return the album for something different. Do you think that, um, that most parents or even kids, for that matter, know everything that's on an album when, they buy an, when, when a child buys an album? I don't know half the things that are on half the albums I own. Right. Some of the bands I listen to, I listen for musical reasons. Other bands I listen to for lyrical reasons. Uh, I know that ACDC, one of my favorite bands, sings a lot of songs glorifying hell and damnation. I'm a Christian. I don't believe in, uh, I don't want to go to hell and I don't want to be damned for all time, but I do like the feel of the songs. The lyrics have no effect on me. Other bands who have more to say, I listen to their words and I learn from their words. Do you think that now there is adequate basis for parents to know what's on the records that their kids are buying? I think if they really are concerned, there is. But uh, quite honestly, I don't think that uh, the majority of parents are in reality as concerned as the PMRC or myself. Uh, I don't think they really want to spend the time to listen to what they might consider to be uh, a bunch of noise. Uh, you know, they, don't, they, they put it on and they can't understand the thing that's being said anyway. So I think most of them won't, don't spend enough time with it. Senator Hollings? Uh, yes, Mr. Snyder, I think I'll just take the opportunity to make an observation because uh, you and I would differ as to what's obscene or what's shocking or what's vulgar. And uh, persons of goodwill will differ on that particular score. I think that somewhere in this hearing record, we should not be on the defensive, and we shouldn't uh, create the atmosphere that we're powerless. The absolute uh, nature of your statement uh, that we don't have any authority, I only want to refer everyone to the Pacifica Foundation case, where the Federal Communications Commission was questioned as to its power to regulate public radio TV broadcasts that was indecent but not obscene. You see, they differed between what was indecent, what was obscene, and what was shocking. They had the seven dirty words. I think everyone remembers that case on the West Coast. And the Supreme Court of the United States found out positively the FCC had the authority, had the responsibility. And I'm quoting from the language of the Supreme Court, patently offensive, indecent material presented over the airwaves confronts the citizen not only in public, but also in the privacy of the home where the individual's right to be left alone plainly outweighs the First Amendment rights of an intruder. So this isn't just a forum to rally one way or the other and hope something happens. This is a forum with a definite responsibility with respect to Congress and enunciating the duties of the Federal Communications Commission, which have been constitutionally followed. So. I understand your opinion, and that's why we invited you up here to hear your words and not mine, but I think that the general nature of all this testimony of nothing, censorship, First Amendment absolutism does not pertain with respect to the broadcast media, and that's, of course, the main media, I guess you would agree, to actually sell the records, wouldn't it not be? Uh, yes, I'd like to clarify something. I said no authority has the right or necessary insight. I didn't say you weren't able to. I said you don't have the right, or I don't have the right, or the RIAA. Also, we're talking about the airwaves as opposed to a person going with their money to purchase an album to play in their room, their home, on their own time. Uh, the airwaves is something different. I think that the FCC and uh, even MTV have done a fair job in keeping profanity, obscenity, and things like that off the public airwaves. But as far as what you listen to your own home, that's something totally different, I feel. Yeah, I, th I think that record ought to be elaborated to show just that. Previously, 
about five years ago, six years ago, before this committee, we had the TV networks. And pursuant to that particular hearing, they again came back, I remember specifically CBS, and they demonstrated how they had this film, and then they got together with their producer and removed certain scenes of violence and certain four-letter words and did not offend the producer's uh, sense of art in the production itself. So we've made some progress, but bottom line with respect to these particular records, the Supreme Court has found that there is that right and that responsibility. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Gore. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Excuse me, are you going to tell me you're a big fan of my music as well? <laughs> no, I'm not, uh, I'm not a fan I'm of your sorry, music. I'm sorry, Mr. Gore. I, uh, I'm, w I'm aware that uh, Frank Zappa and John Denver uh, cover quite a spectrum, and I do uh, enjoy them both. I am, am not, however, a fan of Twisted Sister, and uh, I will okay. readily uh, say that. Mr. Snyder, uh, what is the name of your fan club? The fan club is called the SMF Friends of Twisted Sister. And uh, what does SMF uh, stand for when it's uh, spelled out? It stands for the Sick Motherfucking Friends of Twisted Sister. 